This is the Ross Developers Podcast, episode 78. Hello, ROS developers, and welcome to the ROS Developers Podcast, the program, the podcast that gives you insights from the experts about how to program your robots with ROS. This is Ricardo from The Construct, and today I would like to dedicate this podcast episode to all of you that are around there using industrial robot arms there. So I know that it's not so cool using industrial robot arms as getting a drone that flies over the, the whole city or a, let's say a robot, a wheel robot that moves, uh, transporting some packages around the, also around the city. You know, it's on the industry, so it's place, it's block on a place and so on. But guys, so that, job is so important and it's going to have a huge future uh, when uh, we achieve to get it more intelligent robotic arms. So this episode is dedicated to you. And uh, today, let me, uh, let me tell you that we are going to interview the person who is behind the development of Mubit. You know, this amazing package that allows specifically the, the manipulation, the programming and the, the movement of robotic arms in our system, ROS, of course, operating system. So we are going to talk about that in a few minutes, but before going into that, let me remind you that at The Construct, we have created an online academy where you can learn about ROS from the very beginning. So if you are a person who doesn't know anything about ROS, that's the perfect place to start. We have a complete path that is going to teach you from the very beginning, starting with ROS basics, and then going down into the other concepts like TF, URDF, ROS control, and then finally getting into a course that is going to teach you how to build your own ro robot and how to ROSify it. So take a look, it's called the Robot Ignite Academy, and I will put a link to, the, to this academy in the show notes. Okay, so and now it's time that we go with the interview of today. And today we are going to interview Dave Coleman. So Dave is the CEO of the Picnic Company. Yeah, that's the company behind the development of MoveIt. And he has been one of the main developers of Movement since the very beginning at Willow Garage. And uh, now he's also one of the original developers of also of ROS Control. So in general, he's also an open source robotics advocate. So let's learn a lot more about uh, Dave and Mubit and his company in this interview. Welcome to the podcast, Dave. Hey, Ricardo. Thank you. Thanks for the introduction. It's great to be here. Um, our pleasure and especially congratulations for winning the award of the Ross Developers Awards 2020 that your uh, you you and your company or well actually move it won for the best Ross package of the of the year. Yeah, that was that was very exciting. You sent us a plaque that we're excited to put up in our office. Um, but certainly, it's not just Picnic that won it, but the the Move It community in general, the, the whole international movement. We have a there's a lot of people contributing to Move It outside of Picnic as well. Yes, of course, it's not the development of a single person, and uh, then it's uh, so it was voted by the community for that you, uh, you, uh, Move It is the best ROS package, and then we we have to send to somebody. And uh, since you are taking the lead of the development, then I Indeed. think that is is. Is fair to send that to you, to you and your company specifically. Great. Yeah. So, yeah. We uh, yeah, picnic. We we founded it primarily to support Move It and grow that effort. We we see a lot of companies want to use Move It, um, and so if if they need some support, some integration help, Picnic's there to to provide that, um, and also just provide the leadership for the Move It project. So we're we're excited to be playing that part in the community. That's great, and that's also 
100% necessary because otherwise the, the project can die and it's, it's not possible to let it die. So important project. Uh, can can yeah. you tell to the audience about how these, the movie project started? Sure. Um, it, it predates me. I was involved early on, but not the earliest days. Um, originally, there was um, the Open Motion Planning Library, which is a very abstract pl planning library that came out of research at Rice University and, and Yohan Sukin's work. And that was sponsored by Willow Garage as well. And uh, the integration of OMPL to ROS was called ARM Navigation. So we have navigation for mobile bases, and so it makes sense to call ARM Navigation mm. um, for, for robot arms. Uh, and that was in around 2009, um, and, and E. Gil Jones was a heavy part of that. Uh, Sashin was starting to get involved, Yoan. And uh, then ARM navigation, it was determined that like for mobile manipulation, you actually need more than just ARM planning, but you want to coordinate the ARMs with the mobile base so that you can drive around. And so mm -hmm. Move It was like a complete re-architecture and, and from the ground up redesign of ARM navigation in about 2011. And the idea is that not only does it control ARMs, but it control like a torso if your robot has one of those legs, wheels, and so that it can do kind of the fine-tuned moving of your base while grasping something. And, and so that was one of the design goals there. And in general, it was made to be a lot more uh, modular but the, and, and, and powerful at the same time, some limitations that ARM nav ran into. So we, we can... and, and so I, and my, my involvement was, uh, I was actually brought on as an intern at Willow Garage when Move was first getting started out. I, I wrote the setup assistant and kind of just uh, got deeper and deeper involved in my research during my PhD program. And um, kind of a after Willow Garage closed, there's a little bit of a, a leadership gap and I was encouraged to step up by the community and uh, the rest is history. It's been a, a wild ride. <laughs> okay, great. Then we, I have seen, uh, uh, as you mentioned, movie being used uh, in uh, humanoids, for example, in and also in mobile bases, including an, an arm. So uh, we can say that uh, the original goal has already been achieved, right? Yes. So, yep. Yeah, I, I did a collaboration with uh, the JSK laboratory in Tokyo, and they're a, a, a predominantly humanoids lab, and, and they were using Move It for doing some of the uh, quasi-static walking of robot arms and, and manipulation at the same time, and uh, that was a really fun project to be to be involved in. There's been a, a number of research papers published on using, arm, uh, using legs, but you, you won't find that functionality out of the box in Move It. It takes a little extra elbow grease to get running. Oh, okay, okay. So, yeah, so we'll go into that uh, later. Let me ask you first, uh, so who is in charge of developing movie? You have already said something, but uh, can you tell us to the audience, because we are eager to, to understand how it's been developed, <laughs> who is, uh, how is this development organized? Yeah, um, I'll, I'll get to that in a second. Uh, first to help answer that is like, where do we stand in the Ross ecosystem might be of interest. You have things that are considered core ROS, like RVIS, the middleware, the communication layer, um, a few things around that realm. And then you have like these auxiliary projects that can and cannot use ROS. So I'm thinking about uh, PCL was actually spawned out of Willow Garage, I believe. Um, OpenCV didn't come from Willow Garage, but it was under the stewardship for a while. Then you have Gazebo, which is, uh, it can run without ROS, even though it's developed at the same company, Open Robotics. Mm -hmm. um, and then I, I think of like Move It in that category. And so one interesting thing about Move It though is that we have a, a ROS agnostic core, but then it still heavily uses ROS, the layer above that, because it's really orchestrating planners, collision checkers, grasping perception libraries. It's doing a lot of glue and inter interfacing that to ROS. Um, and so we, we have our own separate ecosystem of lots of plugins and planners and different research that works with MoveIt. Um, and and uh, so we're, we're kind of like a outside of Ross and inside of Ross at the same time. And if you go to our website on the people page or our about page, um, it lists all the maintainers. And so our governance um, inspired by typical open source governance, but we have a, a core group of maintainers who can, can merge things. And there's about 12 of us, I believe. Um, a handful of them are from Picnic, and uh, I think I kind of like have historically been leading as like the main front face to the project, and I'm the one who's been organizing the uh, monthly meetings, which is now kind of morphed into a working group. Now that we have the TSC, they've kind of created this idea of a working group. But we've, we've been doing these monthly maintainer meetings for like four years now, and it's been a huge plus of like making sure that the project's moving forward and coming to agreement. But the primary, I mean, who's in charge is your question. Primary is uh, like 
there's myself, there's Robert Heisch in Germany, uh, Michael Gorner also in Germany. The three of us have been at it for years now, uh, trying to merge pull requests, keep the quality up, add features. And uh, more recently, Henning Kaiser, um, has been he's at Picnic, he's been leading the Move It 2 development, so he's kind of the chief architect on that. And, and Mark Mole comes from Rice University and the OMPL project, he actually inspired that. And he joined Picnic recently, and, and he's becoming kind of the community manager and our head of research of the effort. So I guess we might be considered the, the core ones leading it and voting on things. Um, but there's a lot of other contributors too. And we also have a, a core contributors category of people who are really involved in Move It, but uh, don't quite have white, uh, right access yet. We're kind of still mentoring them and training them. So we encourage people to uh, get involved in the project. There's a bunch of information on our website on, on how to become a core maintainer. Uh, our, our governance is online. Okay, so please to the audience that is there listening, if you help uh, and you want to put your uh, small part into the movie project, that's your opportunity. So go to the website of movie. I will put it a link on the show notes of the episode. And uh, yeah, so check the documentation and then contact Dave or any of his team members in order to collaborate and help to push this project forward. Still many, many things to be done. <laughs> in order to improve. Great. Then uh, let me ask you another question. Uh, so um, for the audience that doesn't know what is movie, so they, they are like I knew people or they, they know about Ross, but never work with uh, our manipulators. So can you explain what is the main functionality of movie? Uh, yeah. Sorry if I, if I lost some listeners there uh, talking about the governance. I get excited about that stuff. <laughs> but uh, what is what is Move It's a great question to to answer that for people who are a little less familiar. And um, you know, it's traditionally it's been global motion planners. It's a type of motion planning where you can't just do an interpolation, a straight line between point A to point B, but you need to be able to plan around something, um, an obstacle. Maybe you want to reach under a table and you can't go through the table. Um, that's that's kind of like the key functionality, which requires um, collision avoidance, collision checking, uh, kind of coming up with these global paths and motion plans that the arms are going to follow. Um, but then another part of Move It is more traditional local planning, uh, which is usually Jacobian inverse kinematics based um, point to point planning. And so we've made a big push on that and the, and the real time control side of it. Um, and, and then some of the higher level parts that are in Move It are choosing how to grasp things, which is important for manipulation, choosing grasp points and generation. So it's a combination of that. We've also been getting more into high level task planning, perception, lots of different efforts, just everything that's needed to have a, a dexterous robot. Uh -huh. And uh, how does perception integrate into that pipe pipeline? Because uh, as you have mentioned, we could have, for example, our arm on the table, and then uh, try to make it grasp this uh, mark over here. And then he knows everything about the environment and nothing can happen in the mean, in between. So he will move it, will do it. But what about uh, integrating obstacles that can uh, appear at some point in time? Yeah, um, we've, we don't want move its scope to get too large. It's already tries to do a lot. And um, you know, if you do too much, you risk doing everything poorly. And so we want to focus on the, the key strengths of Move It. And, and so perception, um, we, we have some functionality, but I think it'd be wise if we kept, we can keep adding more and more, but rather, I think the Ross community needs a very uh, functional perception pipeline package. And so we almost had that with this old Willow Garage project called Object Recognition Kitchen, but I don't, I haven't seen a lot of people use that. I don't know if it's well maintained. So we have PCL, we have OpenCV, but those, yeah, you're saying no, uh, those are like a little bit more low level tools, but something that combines things like OpenCV, uh, maybe combining TensorFlow, which is the more modern take to perception. We just don't have that. Um, and, and so that's unfortunate. And so typically companies and academics who are, are needing to solve that have to write their own integration. But on the other hand, um, every application needs its own set of uh, constraints and problems to solve, so maybe that's just inevitable. But it'd be great if we had like a tabletop recognition package that oh. just worked. There, there are some things like that. So anyway, with Move It, we our, our main way of doing perception out of the box is with Octomaps. Mm -hmm. 
Hmm. And it just breaks up your environment into voxels, which is like little 3D cubes, you can imagine it, but it's very compact and space efficient. And it allows us to, uh, as we're executing a pass, we could detect if something's jumped in front of the, in front of the robot arm and it can stop it safely. Um, it can do some basic manipulation with that. We also have the ability, you can just like add or publish uh, geometric primitives, STL meshes, you still like squares, cuboids, uh, cylinders, all those things that if you want to make your workspace uh, manually, like maybe you have a, a CAD model of your environment, you're doing something like a manufacturing problem, you can import it that way. But if you're doing something a little bit more unconstrained, like uh, someone's home, then you need to do uh, more Octomap. But yeah, that, hopefully that answers your question. Yeah, sure. So that, that means that uh, we can at any point in time uh, capture with a, uh, with a device, could be a point cloud device, for example, and then uh, get the obstacles that are in the trajectory of the robot before it lands, and then include those inside Move It by doing some calls, etc. And then the planner will take into account those objects in order to reach the, the Mac in this case. So it will be avoiding the mic and so on, right? Yep. Yeah, okay. Exactly. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, I just wanted to clarify for the audience uh, that uh, maybe haven't used it any uh, any time and then it thinks that it's just a, like a blind uh, you know I key kinematic solver and planner and then goes there and whatever is in the middle then it crashes so no move it it's it's able to avoid those obstacles and uh, then uh, I have seen on your on your website while I was preparing this interview that you have something that is called the task constructor what what is that and how it works yeah, that's uh, been a really exciting new feature in collaboration with our colleagues in Germany, uh, Michael and Robert. And it's it, it's kind of like a state machine, but it's not. Um, so throw that out of your mind, but it, I, I just put it in there. It's, it's a task planner, which means that if you want to plan a series of different motions that have discrete steps, so um, like pick and place is mm -hmm. the the canonical example that, you know, I think that works out of the box right now, but it's it's generic enough where it can be used for all sorts of different um, tasks with robot arms. Maybe you want to do like material removal or addition or some kind of manufacturing process. Um, but the task constructor, it's, I, I might butcher this. I, I haven't actually worked on it time myself, but um, sometimes you want to plan something not in linear order. It's actually more wise to plan in reverse order. For example, if you want to graph something you don't want to start moving in first with your hand and then choose how you're going to grasp it. You actually want to look at the object you're going to pick up and choose the best way to grasp it and then work backwards to where you're currently at. And so it, it has a bunch of uh, components for laying that series of logic out of like how the robot should reason about a, a complicated multi-step task. Uh -huh. And um, it's got a visualizer that integrates nicely into Arviz, um, but it still requires a lot of uh, like custom code. It's not like a drag and drop environment yet. Um, we did just get uh, a picnic, a grant to add some of that functionality we're excited about. So stay tuned in the coming months for announcements around that. Okay. But uh, yeah, the, the, the task constructor, it replaces an old piece of uh, a module in, in move it called the manipulation pipeline that is, was difficult to use. And this is a, a much more intuitive approach. Okay. Okay. Yeah. You mentioned a very typical example that is the grasping pipeline. Uh, and then uh, ma many people doesn't know because they haven't uh, been in front of the problem, but it, it requires to do a lot of steps before grasping something. It, it, so it looks like, okay, you say grasp that and then you go and grasp. No, so you had to go to the post, detect the, the object, go to the position, but before uh, some steps before, some centimeters before, then do the final approach, then the grasping, then lift, then bring back so that's all that a lot if you have to do it manually and then with the task constructor you you mentioned that this is more or less uh, provided already it simplifies a lot yep. of work that's that's great i haven't tested that i tried that and then i would like to i'm eager to to try that uh, task constructor for for grasping great yeah we're using it for a lot of our projects now and we've had a lot of success and a lot of our clients have been very excited about having that added in oh okay 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 so yeah so 
people, if you are listening to this and you have tried, let us know. Put some of the comments here on the podcast and let us know if you, if you yeah, successfully used and what was your experience, how can uh, it be improved and so on. So we can make this progress further. Then uh, what about grasping? Because we have been talking about uh, kinematic solving, about uh, planning, but the, the, the actual thing of grasping, in, in my opinion, it wasn't not included at the beginning of the project and has been added afterwards. Is, is that right? So, or how is grasping supported by MoveIt? Yeah, I think historically grasping the, the library, Move was actually built for a grass library called Graspit. And that oh. came, I actually forget what lab it was, but I'm at Mateo, I think at Willow. Um, and Graspit, it tried to do a very complex modeling of physics and fixed friction cones. And I, my understanding of that line of research was it was eventually abandoned for, you just couldn't model all, every last detail and come up with good grass points. Um, and also Graspit itself, it's not been well maintained, it's hard to use, requires a very magical XML format. So I haven't heard of someone using Graspit in a long time. I'm sure there's someone out there in some research lab. Um, and so my response to that was uh, in grad school, I developed uh, Move It Simple Grass, which later on became Move It Grass. And that's still, it, it's, a, it's a pretty naive approach, but it, um, it's available with Move It, and we've been using it for a couple projects. And it just uses geometric primitives, and it generates a couple thousand different angles of attack that you can grasp cuboid. Um, so not super uh, fancy, but it's, it's all move it based components, integrates nicely with move it. Um, some recent work, we've been collaborating with Intel, and they, they have like a robotics group there, open source group. And they, they, they took a research project out of academia called GPD, uh, Grass Pose Detection, and that's a neural network based approach. So you can use GDP, GDP standalone, or you can also use uh, a new version that Intel uh, created for ROS2 called uh, ROS2 Grass Library. Oh, and that just, I think they sped it up by using some Intel magic. Um, but, so both those are available. And some recent work that uh, Picnic sponsored this past summer, this current summer, is um, around DexNet, which came out of Berkeley. And we've created a, uh, a Move It interface for, for DexNet. And uh, so be stay tuned to that. There'll be some blog post, posts coming out in the coming weeks on that effort. But DexNet's a really impressive neural network approach to grasping that we're excited about. Um, it, it uses, I believe, a lot more training data, but it comes with more accurate results. So, so those are all different options you can use and move it um, for, for the grasping. And then other, a, lot, a lot of applications just use suction, which requires a lot more simplistic grasping, because typically it's just go down on an object and pick it up. <laughs> Close the gripper, right? Well, for suction, there's no gripper. It's just turn on the, the vacuum. Ah, okay, suction. Ah, okay, okay. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I understand. Okay. So move it, you can use suction, you can use dual fingers, three fingers, even more complex, but the more fingers you add, the, the harder it gets to reason about it. Okay, okay, okay great. And uh, now <laughs> something uh, uh, that I have used uh, a lot, which is the movie commander. So what is that and what is its purpose? I, you know, I might not be the right person to speak about it. Um, I have, in general, avoided using Python with MoveIt, and that's simply because I did a lot of research at the very low-level algorithm side uh, using OMPL and probabilistic motion planning in my thesis, and it was all C++. And so oh, okay. I ended up just really staying in C++ land, and the higher level, I mean, but the summary, which I think you could probably speak better than I, MoveIt Commander is a Python interface, and you know, if you don't want to get into the, the guts of move it, which most people don't, I don't blame them, uh, then it makes sense to, to use the Python abstraction and it's supposed to be a very easy, intuitive uh, interface. Did I capture that well, Ricardo? Yes, it's very nice and it simplifies a lot. So you can make a, you can create a, a, a grasping task using perception and the whole pipe. So identifying where is the position, providing this to the, a uh, kinematic solver of move it and then moving the arm, then doing the whole pipeline. That's very easy. I love it. Uh, so it has simplified a lot. We we teach that in our uh, courses. So how do you? Yeah, I think it's really useful for uh, educational purposes and for like dipping your toes in the move it before going all in. It's just the simplicity of move it or move it commander. Yes, yes, yes. I, I agree. And then, so we have the MoveIt commander, and what about the 
Booth Group. What, what is that? Yep, so move, is it so important? Yeah, we, there, so Move has a couple high-level interfaces, and it can often confuse people. Um, I'll also mention that we have an Arviz user interface, which is a bunch of buttons you click. And that one, it's just really exciting when you set up a new robot using a setup assistant, which is like a, an easy user interface. It pops into Arviz. You can just click plan, execute, um, and if things go well, it just works, you know, and and that's great. But move, the move group is the uh, it used to be the recommended interface for working with Move It, and it really follows the Ross centric worldview that you should have Move It running in a separate node, which is in, in Ross one means a separate process. Mm -hmm. uh, so you have that running in a separate process from your application. So maybe your application is talking to a perception system, uh, a mobile-based navigation system, and move it all at the same time. And you're coordinating these. And so Move Group has an interface that you can talk to either in Python or C++ to uh, abstract away all the details of how a motion planner works. And so, yeah, some of our projects and clients use that and, and we support it. Um, but I want to mention we, are, we have come out with a new API for Move It that is a little more industrial, low-level power user. and Maybe it wouldn't be good for uh, students of the construct, you know, learning move it for the first time. So we're supporting both, but um, it's the new interface is uh, move it CPP. Have you run into that, Ricardo? No, no. So I I've seen it, but I haven't used it. Yeah, so move it CPP has a, a pretty similar API to Move Group, but rather than everything going over a ROS action or service or topic. We remove the ROS, and you're, connect, you're communicating directly to the C++ classes Maybe. a step lower. And so, it, it's you know, ROS one has latency issues, real time issues, um, and so the way we worked around that is just get rid of more of the ROS. I mean, we're still using ROS, but just using less. Uh, in ROS two, we've already ported that to move it 2.0. It's not clear how much of a pain point that's going to be though. Now that um, that they've improved the, the middleware with DDS, so. <laughs> okay okay yes I, I will ask you about that uh, later about movie <laughs> to, 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 to and what yeah. the problems and so on because we try to to do do a live class on on YouTube uh, teaching about movie for Ross 2 but uh, unfortunately, we, could, <laughs> we couldn't achieve to make it work. It, uh, I have to tell you, it was uh, like uh, two months ago. And I know that you have mm -hmm. uh, recently, you have uh, published a beta release. So that it was an alpha state when we were t testing that. Okay. Oh, you were using the alpha, huh? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah because uh, we love it. And then we wanted to provide this uh, introduction to guys into ROS2. So, hey, guys, you also have move it in there. So go mm -hmm. for it, you know, go for ROS2. Uh, but uh, we tried and then, so we have a limited amount of time to to prepare those things and we didn't achieve it to make it work that time. Now it's a pending issue. So I will let you know when it is. Uh, so we when we try this beta and, and we release this live class. So uh, I'd see. What yeah, you outside of uh, the picnic, picnic company that I, you know, I work in, we have heard that the, the beta release works well. Uh, Swiri has used it some, on some of the Ross Industrial Project. Um, but yeah, we're, the, the Foxy branch has just been created and we're pushing that out this month. And, and so I think that'll be a lot smoother experience. I encourage you to try it again soon. Okay, okay, we'll do it, definitely. Yeah. Yep. Great, then um, uh, what about uh, before going into Move It for Ross 2? We already went. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do that a bit more. Then, uh, so uh, Mubit also has a set of plugin interfaces, different ones. So, wh what are they for? So, uh, which type of plugins can we write for Mubit? Mm -hmm. And that's really the difference between the, the ROS, uh, sorry, the ARM navigation stack I was describing earlier, the historical predecessor, and Mubit is that rather than having a bunch of disparate ROS nodes that were all communicating to the like IK and collision checking being separate. They were converted into plugins using uh, ROS has a plugin lib infrastructure. So we're using the, the standard plugin approach. And that, that allows you to kind of build off of move it. But if something doesn't suffice for your application, you can pull out one component without throwing out the whole thing. So you don't have to like reinvent the whole wheel, just be like, well, this type of planner doesn't work for my application. 
So we've seen companies who are using Move It in their commercial application, but they want to like speed a certain piece up or they want to uh, optimize for a certain type of problem. And so, yeah, some of the examples at the highest level, the Move group that you were just mentioning, there's, there's, capa there's different capabilities that you can add. Uh, like we, we added a Descartes capability, which is a certain type of Cartesian planner that does under constrained planning. Um, there's the IK, the planning, the, the actual motion planner plugin. Uh, we have this notion of a planner request adapter, which does a lot of smoothing of the problem before it goes to the planner to account for real world problems. We have um, different kind of controllers and that it, controller interfaces. Uh -huh. The main one would be ROS control, but we can also work with non ROS control robots. Um, then there's um, sensors that we can support. Right now we support two, both point clouds and depth sensors, um, different type of constraint plugins, collision checking plugins, and finally, uh, occupancy maps wow. so there's, there's a whole slew of them i don't want to go into too much detail i'm not yeah. sure we have time for that but yeah, yeah yeah so just to give an idea of which were are the points that uh, people can uh, modify their behavior of move it so all those different yep. points that he mentions especially interesting are the ones that planners and the kinematic solvers which are very typical so everybody has his own implementation so if you like more that one than the standard one, that we, which is OMPL, right? Open, mm -hmm. uh, then, uh, right. yeah, so they, they can uh, create a kind of plugin and use it and so on. Okay. And, uh, and you if, if, you're a, if you're a researcher or a, a developer who makes a new plugin that you want to share, I encourage you to uh, post it on our, our different communication channels like Discourse or reach out to me directly and I'll help promote it on adding it to our website or, you know, putting blog posts out. So we definitely want to collaborate with um, the, the greater community. And so don't think of Move It as like a done product, but a always evolving thing and you can get involved. Great, great. Yeah, so that's very beneficial for you if you are creating your own planners or plugins for Move It, then it's beneficial because you are going to get a lot more of visualizations and attention to your product. And also it's going to improve uh, Move It because it's going to provide another plugin that can be useful for the community so i'm watching to you so contribute <laughs> contribute guys okay then uh, what about you mentioned about uh, ross industrial so so how does move it connect or relate with uh, ross industrial mm -hmm. um ross industrial is, is a consortium uh, applying ross to industrial applications um there's a uh, a fair amount of overlap to what we what Picnic does too. We we take Move It and we integrate it to commercial industrial applications as well. Um, but we're Picnic members of, of Ross Industrial, and um, I've been to most of their events over the past I don't know eight years and speak, spoken a lot. So yeah, we're we're close partners. And um, in Ross Industrial Americas, they have three different geographic regions. But the Americas one uh, is supported largely by SWERI, uh, which is a, a research group there. And um, yeah, they've done some great work adding new new planners, new plugins to move it. For example, they uh, really revitalized this old planner that had been in academia called Stop, and they got that to a, a great working state. Um, they they did some IK solvers for particular type of industrial arms. Um, and so there's been collaboration there. Um, and Ross Industrial, I think, was originally founded to provide all these industrial drivers. And we definitely make use of those, uh, move it community in general when we want to connect. For example, the Universal Robotic UR5, very popular robot with our ecosystem. And um, Ross Industrial's done a great job of supporting that driver, and, and we use it a lot. So there's some overlap there. Um, they, they did uh, come out with a kind of a, a fork of move it recently that's very specific to a type of industrial process, uh, Tesseract, you might have heard of. Yes. And so it's got a lot of uh, uh, lineage and heritage from the Move It project, but it's really focused on follow like material adding and subtracting operations. And um, I'm not super happy about the fork, but it, we've been bringing in some of the functionality back to Move It. Um, but they they are moving fast and and um, adding some cool stuff there. So uh, we're working with them as much as possible on that project as well. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Because I'm asking you that because uh, when you go, for example, to the documentation of Ross Industrial, the, uh, the tutorials they have online, they they start by uh, teaching how to use Move It with the with the mm -hmm. robot. So it's kind of like oh, so if you are new, then it 
okay, so brush industrial means move it or is the same thing? So it's not, it's, it's a tool that is being used by brass industrial consortium to manipulate uh, industrial robots, of course. But then move it needs those ROS drivers, right? Mm -hmm. In order to, or, or drivers, even if they are not ROS based, but they need those drivers that, let's say, ROS industrial is creating. So it's kind of a, a symbiotic, uh, symbiotic uh, approach. Or, can we say that? Yeah, yeah, symbiotic. Uh, Ross Industrial has done a ton to drive Ross adoption in the greater community outside of the high tech startups yeah. and research labs. And it's been really exciting to see their progress and growth over the years. Okay. Okay. And be part of that. Okay. Okay. Uh, great. Then, uh, then I mentioned about the connection between Ross Industrial and Movie. Then, what about the connection between uh, Movie and Ross Control? which also you are one of the initial developers. Yeah, yeah, I was involved with Ross Control early on, and um, I, I, that's our recommended approach for integrating to low-level hardware, but you don't have to use Ross Control. It, it's, it's a very, I, I would consider a fairly simple interface compared to other um, low-level controllers like Oracos, but Movit can use, work with Oracos just as well, oh. um, or you can do something completely custom. Uh, ROS Control originally spun out of the PR2 software stack. It was yeah. what it was developed for the PR2, and so we we have a a plugin for working with ROS Control that makes it really tightly integrated, where you can switch controllers and stream commands. But if you don't have that API for your robot, that's fine. We can also just send a, a ROS action um, or even a publish a message of a trajectory and to execute it. Those are all options, and you, you always like roll your own like. The great thing about open, open source is that if you need to dig in and write something custom, you can do that. But yeah, ROS control, it's just, it it does a lot of the work for you in terms of providing ROS interfaces for your robot. And so all you have to do is uh, a HAL, a hardware abstraction layer, implement that of how does your robot take commands? Is it velocity, is it position, is it torque, uh, accelerations? And once you add a few, implement a few functions and then connect to your low hardware, what, what, whether that's USB or Ethernet, Ethercat, boom. Now move it will just kind of fall in place and um, you'll get some, some basic planning functionality working. Uh -huh. And uh, you mentioned about that also move it is able to work uh, with rockers for the control part of the robot. And uh, that, does that mean that uh, then move it can work on real time systems? Um, the original design goals of, of ROS 1.0 was not to be real time, and so MoveIt inherited those design goals. So MoveIt uh, it, it has some some design things that have caused it so that the, the the cycle time to do a control feedback loop cycle time is the wrong word, but the the control feedback loop it's not as fast as like we'd love out of the box. But you can actually optimize MoveIt if you get down to the C++ level. If you use the, the Move It CPP API I was talking about, where you can get Move It running a lot faster and a lot more reactive. Uh, real time is an overloaded word, so you got to like, is it hard real time, soft real time, what frequency? Um, it's, it's a complicated answer, um, but we've been developing a lot of new real time functionalities in Move It. In particular, this uh, new package called Move It Servo, and that it previously called JogArm. Um, JogArm has been brought in to Move It and become like a first class citizen. And, it, it allows you to do things like visual servoing or very reactive feedback from a, a perception sensor, and the robot can real time in real time react to like things jumping out and collisions, and um, wow. that's made it a lot more real time. Uh -huh. Okay, okay, great, great. Uh, then, um, so let's say that there is a listener who has created his own robotic arm. And then he would like to provide movie support for his product because he wants to sell it and then say, hey, that's supporting movie. So uh, which ones would be the, the steps to take for that person? If it well, obviously you, should Ross, contact, Sorry? obviously you should contact Picnic Robotics. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I will put that link to Picnic Robotics <laughs> here on the show notes so you can go straight. <laughs> no, I mean, our, our, our goal is for, move, I mean, that's not a goal. It's already been achieved. You can totally use MoveIt without working with us. And we have amazing tutorials, I have to say. Um, the Setup Assistant, I've mentioned a few times, is a user interface with a bunch of, like, 
some click-through buttons on how to take your robot model, uh, which URDF, I'm sure most of our listeners know that, and set up, move it in the configurations and the, the launch files required. Um, and so, yeah, the, the URDF stuff's probably the hardest one. And so, you, you know, there's things like the SolidWorks converter that will generate a lot of the URDF for you. Um, so I'd recommend, you know, if you're using SolidWorks to use that at step one. Step two, move it step assistant. Step three, start reading our tutorials um, about how to can optimize and configure it for your exact application. And um, I, it's really like tripled, quadrupled in size of the past couple of years, the amount of documentation we have. But ultimately, um, there are some more esoteric APIs where um, if you really need something advanced and you're really pushing the demands of manipulation, you need to like dig into the code um, or, or contact Picnic. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> so you have mentioned several times the setup assistant of Mubit. And I can tell you <laughs> for the first time I saw that in action many years ago already. So several, not many, but several years ago. I was amazed. I was amazed. I couldn't believe it. So easy. It's like a Windows uh, install thing, more or less. So in order to set up your robot, your own robot, you, you only need to have this URDF file. And then you are set up using this uh, kind of uh, next, next, next. OK, so you have to take some, some actions, but they are all graphically and beautifully shown on the screen. They are amazing. So, Congratulations for that idea about creating the setup at assistant because it's it's amazing, it's amazing. So the the guy who is creating this new robotic arm, then he, if he has his uh, URDF model, then he can apply this setup assistant and then create the movie config packages and then more or less. But he needs also the the control, right? Mm. Yeah, that's that's true. Um... You know, if you're buying an off-the-shelf like commercial uh, robot, then they typically come with these interfaces yeah. already. And right. if if they don't, if they're not officially supported by the vendor, um, the open source community typically has already released uh, an implementation for that. And so that makes things a lot easier. But if that doesn't exist, it's a very esoteric brand you've bought, or if mm -hmm. you've made something custom using, I don't know, like like Dynamixels as a as a common uh, hobbyist servo or or um, uh, you're making a just new company around robot arms, then yeah, you need to combine like whatever like API typically C plus plus that you're the way you're sending your arms, and then like implement that in uh, the ROS control hardware abstraction layer. But it's it's really three functions, um, or, or in two. There's a, a read and there's a write, mm -hmm. and so the read is you need to populate a, a vector or an array of where your joint values are at. Are you, you know, what is the current position of every joint, current uh, velocity, preferably. And then the, the right one is you just tell the servos uh, or the, the actuators, now I want you at this control cycle to go to, to this level, at this velocity position. And um, that's, that's the bare bones of it. Yeah, and then if you don't understand what uh, Dave is doing, is, is explaining, then uh, contact Picnic because he can help you <laughs> on developing this uh, this uh, controller for your arm robot. Okay, so that's and there's the it, like short of contacting us. Like there's also uh, we put together a boilerplate called the Ross Control Boilerplate that provides a great example of a very simple robot of how to implement it. Um, you can simulate it in Gazebo and see it quickly running. Um, and so a lot, a lot of companies and groups have used that to kind of bootstrap their Ross Control development, and it's it's a great tool. Okay. Okay. So now that you mentioned about your company uh, helping and developing all that, can you tell us uh, about so your your company? It's uh, offering this kind of uh, services of uh, what's the word in, in in English? It's when you you help somebody else to to do their own projects. So in robotics. So what, what's the name? Yeah, that? support services. Yeah, support services. Okay, so that is that the yeah. business, the main business of your company? Yeah, that 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 is um, engineering services. We do we can like build applications using all these uh, ROS components, mm -hmm. and we're always trying to while while we're doing our projects, um, uh, release part of that uh, back to open source. But of course, a lot of it is also protected under NDAs, and uh, you know, people the companies want to own their IP, and that's perfectly understandable because they're they have investors and whatnot. 
Um, but that's our main strategy for, for growing the MoveIt project is increasing user adoption and uh, taking in support contracts and, and software engineering contracts. Um, we, we do have a, a long-term goal of rolling out some, some premium features on top of MoveIt. Mm -hmm. um, and there's, there's some progress there. Okay. Stay tuned. Okay. <laughs> okay. And they, they have to be a ROS based robots, or uh, do you also provide support for non ROS based robots? Because I know, I, I see that you, you, you are super experts in robotics, not only based on, on ROS. So. Yeah. It, it doesn't have to be ROS. Doesn't. Doesn't. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Great. Then uh, let me ask you about another uh, problematic point of move it and see how it's solved it's about w making move it work with python 3. so what what is the status it is does it exist a, a version of move it for ross noetic which works with python 3 from the very beginning yeah uh at world move it day a few months ago um i forgot who submitted the pull request but it's, it's been happening over the course of the year python 3 has been uh, adopted throughout the code base, and I think we've we've fully ported everything. Um, but the Noetic branch is building, and uh, the only we're, we're ready to release. It. I was actually working on it last Wednesday with another engineer all day. Um, we're ready to push out Noetic. There's just some breakages in the lower level ROS infrastructure that's keeping us from releasing it, both in um, like geometry to TF as well as in uh, Catkin tools. And the, the problem is, is that the support for ROS1 is really waning from a lot of organizations because, every, I mean, understandably, they're, they're focused on getting ROS2 to be really effective because it is the new thing. So, uh, honestly, we want to get this noetic release out and done and then, like, clean our hands of it and, and really be like, okay, this is the last release. Now we're 100% focused on, on Move It 2. So we have a team working on Move It 2 right now at Picnic. Um, there's a, a weekly meeting if you're interested in joining the development on Wednesday mornings. Um, and, and so that's, that's going to be our focus. And, and Noetic is, is once we get that, that release out, we're kind of ending it. Okay. Okay. Uh, I was asking you about that because uh, we release a package, which is called OpenAI ROS, which allows to uh, use OpenAI algorithms within the ROS ecosystem, but OpenAI works with Python 3, then, well, many problems. Then many people wanted to use uh, uh, MoveIt inside this environment with OpenAI ROS, and they were having a lot of problem, even even ourselves. So even ourselves, so we figure out some solutions, but you know, like, like tricky solutions. So having a version in Python three that would be great. And uh, well, so uh, audience, you know the the answer is is almost there. Well, there is one there already. But it's a uh, final one being released, uh, right? To to be released. Yeah, I mean, Noetic. I, to, to be clear, like it's still going to be supported for a few more years. Yeah. Um, like long-term support, but it's uh, the last development version. Okay, and uh, then uh, uh, I wanted to ask you something about movie for Ross to be before going into that. Uh, in order to change. Then I would like to ask a very stupid question of mine. I'm sorry, but it, it's about the name of Movit because when it started, it was called Movit with an uh, quest, an um, exclamation mark at the end, and now yep. it's it's moved. So I, I remember that you sent me a message uh, some from the hey, hey uh, Ricardo, uh, take into account that this has changed, and now you have to to, to change this. And then okay, okay, no problem. So uh, what is the reason of that? Um, just everyone in the maintainer team, uh, who's like kind of leading movement these days, none of us liked it. Um, it just, I mean, I got used to it. it every time I typed it, I put the exclamation mark in, yeah. but you know, you get weird punctuations at ends of sentences and everything sounded more excited than you actually were. Um, so the, the, the person who originally like really wanted to have that in the brand, um, is, has long since like no longer been involved in the project. And so I, I just proposed it one day at a maintainer meeting, like, Hey, what if we drop this? And everyone was like, yeah, please, let's get rid of it. <laughs> um, cause like previously, whenever people forgot the exclamation park, I felt like I had to correct them. And, and now it's good to like, not, and it's just kind of a weird thing. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> we, we, we coincided, we got a new logo and did some new rebranding and, um, it just feels cleaner. Okay, okay, okay. I agree with you. It's easier and so, but uh, pl please. So now I have to tell my my team every time that 
they have to remove that when we talk about move it in anything. <laughs> so please, if you see that we are putting this permission, don't be mad at us. So we are trying. No, it's no big deal. Okay. It's no big deal. Okay. Do, do you guys do the upside down exclamation mark in, in Spain? Yeah. Is that part of a... Yes. In the spring. Before and after the word move it? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> even like that. And then maybe next year we'll have to put a, even an accent at the. Oh, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know. Okay, so uh, what about ROS2? Uh, move it for ROS2. So, what, what is already possible to be done with ROS2? With move it? So, yeah, we've been um, putting a lot of her rah, rah, hooray, move it to. Um, and there's a lot of exciting things that are going to be enabled by having move it run on ROS2. So if you've heard the argument, I mean, I don't want to rehash the whole argument about why ROS2 is better, but I mean, real time is a big one for us. You know, that, that matters a lot for robot arms. And so we have a roadmap published on our website. It's on the menu. Um, you can kind of see all the areas that we're, we're aiming towards to improve in ROS2. The biggest thing so far though that we've we've actually done is just the move it servo package I was telling you about. Um, we had a, an, a researcher this summer working on um, really adding a lot of new functionality the way that we do real-time inverse kinematic solving with collision checking um, while avoiding singularities and joint limits. And that's only available in move it Two now. It's not being backported. So there's a reason to switch. But yeah, so far, the, the truth is, so far, we've just ported Move It 1.0 to Move It 2.0. So it's not a rewrite yet. Um, we've, we have taken the opportunity to deprecate and remove code that we don't like. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so for example, the, the manipulation uh, package in, in Move It, it's never, it's never been easy to use and it's been buggy. We, just, we didn't port that to ROS 2.0 because we're replacing that with a move task constructor. And there's a few other little examples like that where we've been hanging on the code longer than we should. Um, so we're, like I mentioned, we're wrapping up uh, the port to move it to. We're almost, uh, I, mean, I would say we are feature complete. Um, there's just a few pull requests that are, are getting merged. Um, but in this fall, we'll be now actually changing to uh, use the, the ROS2 features better. And, and that's going to be great. So particularly the, the real-time pieces. Great, great. Aiming for that and uh, eager to, to test that. So if, if we test right now the current version, the, the beta that is released already, then uh, can, uh, so shall, shall we be able to run the setup assistant for one uh, robotic arm and then make some uh, plans for that arm, provided that it's not a complicated arm with uh, strange... Uh, joints or strange uh, relations between the joints? Um, I don't think the setup assistant is fully working yet. We're still having, because so much changed in ROS2. Uh -huh. um, and so the way the launch files run yeah. um, is totally different, right? Yeah. And so the setup assistant is an automated way of generating launch files and YAML files. Hmm. And so right now it's still a manual process. So we do have a demo using Move it CPP and it has a launch file and I believe a YAML file. Um, and so you need to kind of just take that and then fork it and adopt it for yourself. Uh, it's just, it's a big effort to, to adapt all of that. Um, I'm, I'm looking at our spreadsheet. Um, yeah, that, that's like the last package that we haven't gotten to yet. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. I, I understand. It. But it, it will get ported. It's just a matter of when. Okay. 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 Uh, then we'll have to, when we do this demo, we'll have to still uh, configure manually. Okay, no problem. I, I want to like mention um, uh, a shout out to the EU, which you're, you're currently at. Um, the, we did get one of the Rosen grants that's been helping um, with this port to ROS 2.0. So that's something, you know, give some credit for that funding support. Um, it's been a, been, a, been a great program. Great. Thank you. Thank you for that support to move it. Thank you very much. Then uh, the we are about to finish the, this question. Uh, let me ask you if uh, Move It can work on Windows or needs yes. to work. Yeah, can can it? Oh, great! <laughs> so. I, I mean, I, I haven't uh, personally tested it, but I, I we we have done a project at Picnic where we shipped it with with Windows support. Um, we do have a good partnership with some contacts at Microsoft, 
And so their um, Azure IoT ROS team, they have already merged in uh, Windows support for Move It 1.0, mm -hmm. and there is an open pull request for 2.0 uh, Windows support. And so we are getting active uh, maintenance from them on, on that side. And, and so that's, that's great news. That's the best you could hope for. Great, great. Yeah, because there is a lot of people that is wanted to use Windows on their robot and use RAW. So now that there is a RAW version for Windows that works more or less, or having this uh, move it also possible to be used there is, is a huge advantage for them. And uh, then uh, you, you almost mentioned around the, the whole uh, interview, but uh, can you tell us or summarize the main point about the plans for the next year of MoveIt? Yeah, um, it's really continuing on the Move It 2 development and um, at really taking advantage of all the new features that ROS 2 provides. Like mm -hmm. I said, right now it's straight, straight, straight port. Um, the other thing I want to mention, though, is we have added a, a large piece of new functionality to Move It. And I got to give it again a shout out to our, our colleagues at, at, at Intel and their open source group. But this package called Move It Calibration, and it you know, calibration is the, the dirty work that has to be done for every good robotic deployment, and it it's, gets forgotten about. But this will calibrate your cameras and your sensors to your robot arm, to your end effector. Wow. And the way it's been implemented by a developer, UVN, um, is really, really cool. It's a great user interface, integrates to Arvis. Um, there's a checkerboard that you, you run through. So you, we've just pushed out some. Sorry. We just put out some blog posts and some. What was that? Sorry, <laughs> it's because of the lag that, <laughs> yeah, so you yeah. mentioned that, it, so for the calibration, you are going to use a checkerboard then. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, there's different kinds you can use, but uh, yeah, we just pushed out a, a tutorial and um, uh, some blog posts about that functionality and, and Picnic's been working a lot with those guys at Intel on and getting it like part of the, the, the move it ecosystem and, and well vetted and tested. Okay. Great, a amazing. The calibration is always a pain. It's always a pain. So yeah. If you can provide that yeah. in a kind of automatic way, uh, I mean, with a system, with a reliable system, that's a huge improvement also. Okay, great. Then, uh, okay, so uh, let's, uh, we are going to finish, so to, to end. So where can the audience find you and how can they support your work? Yeah. Um, we we migrated with everyone else to Discourse, so there's now a, a Move It channel where all of our big announcements are, and so you, you need to like actually click that little button on your user account and click Watch. I recommend so that you actually get the emails when there's new notifications. Um, we also at Picnic have a newsletter that outlines every quarter, so it's not very often, but all the newest features in Move It, as well as some updates from Picnic. So if you want to hear more about what we're doing, I encourage you to sign up to the newsletter on the Picnic's website. Um, Moveit.ross.org is the main website, and I think it's a, a fairly beautiful uh, open source project website. Tons of information there. Um, and finally, um, yeah, I mean, there's, there's Ross answers for some user technical questions, typical sus suspects. Uh, okay, okay, very good. So I have taken note of all that, and I will put some links also in the show notes in case that uh, somebody didn't get the words or something, so you can find them there, linking to those appropriate, the usual suspects and more. Oh, we're, we're also uh, just starting to play with Discord, the uh, it's kind of like a Slack um, chat app for video gamers. Um, we heard of the navigation project. They've been had a lot of success with using Slack for, um, for coordinating developers on the project. Uh, but we chose to go with Discord instead, just to be rebellious. But we're, there's a, a number of people on there now. I think it's a, a little bit nicer than IRC. So if you want some developer chat, check that out. It's on our website as well. Yeah, that's very nice, the Discord channel, because you can talk in real time to the people. So it's, not, it's not like the discourse, the discourse channel, which is more you answer, you ask a question, and then you get a response and so on. The Discord channel is more uh, real-time communication with others. Yep. Okay. Yep. Okay. So that's a lot that we have covered here. So <laughs> thanks a lot this uh, uh, day for for your the, your time here and explaining all that to to the audience. I think that they are going to take a, a lot of value from that. Thank you very much, Dave.
Yeah, and, and thank you, Ricardo, for highlighting all the exciting things happening in Ross community and ecosystem. And I think it's a important contribution right there. And um, yeah, okay. uh, I hope everyone can find use out of Move It and let me know if there's any feedback. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. And Thanks. now, uh, before finishing, I would like to remind you that our goal is to achieve a 10x increase in the number of listeners. So how can we achieve that? Only with your help. If you like the podcast, please uh, help us reach that goal about 10x. And how can you do it? Well, you can give us five stars on iTunes or Stitcher. And also, you can recommend us to your colleagues. And that is all for today. See you next week with a new lesson from the experts. And until then, keep pushing your Ross learning.